have the final copy of the 2011-13 as a resolution with respect to financing the budget for 12. Yeah. But 
That's the problem with being self-insured. You have to have such a large pot for those claims to come out of, just sitting there. In case it does happen, and, and it might worked, not. And it's happen. worked in the past, so we. You hope it doesn't happen, but if it does, you've got to have that money there. But we're looking into getting out of the self insured game. So if we get to a private carrier, then they assume that risk. Yeah, and we know our costs will be X amount. Well, that's the thing. And yeah, we take so many risks anyhow. Why? Are we, you know, of course, I think years ago, self insured was time. a way to go, but our employees are. We're all getting older. You know, and the claims are going to be higher. I mean, back when we were all young, we rarely had a major claim. But now, I think we're going to start seeing more and more. Okay. But if we can get out of that, I think that would be a bonus. We'll see. Which we will debate later on. But yeah, we, can't, but we just can't do anything about, about this budget because of it. Yeah. So that resolution number is what? Eleven thirteen. I realize too we got about six or bills are better. This hospital in there too. We've pursued the last few Five, years too. But close to six, isn't it? Five four. Yeah, but that's been there for about three years now. Oh, this, this is the third year. Third year. Hindsight's always 2020, and we shouldn't have lowered the mill last year. Last year. We should have kept the cash reserves Just in like place. Just like and we thought we and should. And we could be we trying to save some money. Yeah. I understand. I, I supported that. Yeah. I, and I, we could have we could have already been about the same. If it had lowered last year, but we lowered yeah. last year, so we should, probably should have left it about the same. I, I, I was encouraged to lower it. Otherwise, no, did that because I thought we had plenty of room. But we, as it turned out, with the price of everything coming in, they did have room. And that's what I'm trying to understand. I guess what we did wrong last year. That's 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 basically what's the problem. With that. But if we look at a three-year average, we're Bella, we're, we're, we're pretty much online. Yeah. It's just that we could last year and spend cash reserves and lower the mill rate. No Okay, I'm, I'm done. That's fine. Any more? I mean, I, I no, I, I'm I, in a hurry. I'm sure. No, answer. I just I. I guess more I'm trying to understand what we did wrong last year than I am this year. It's, or I'm just trying to, tell, you know, sit here. I remember all the discussion. I remember I going through it, and uh, it didn't happen. I want to know why. And I don't remember what the increase in road oil was this year as opposed to last year. I'm certain it was up a pretty good percentage. Like everything else, a few calls. Well, road oil went up through the year, which we didn't anticipate. That's right. Road oils tripled the last probably five years, I imagine. More than that. Well, 
people's mercy right now, it seems like. Maybe they don't have to not have any roads or Well, that's another decision that's going to have to be made, too, is whether we're going to maintain the 250 miles of ball weather road. I agree with that, too. Yeah. That was probably cost them, what, 25, 30,000 miles, dollars a mile, that just to seal it. I think probably not. This is mile seal. That's a lot of dollars. So I think our challenge is, you know, for next year will be health insurance, whether we maintain all the roads or not, become more frugal. Well, what, as far as going through the, each department, it's, it's like I said something to Terry, and he said, you know, you could save money over time doing that. I don't know that I'm in a position to feel like I can micromanage these departments. Do you think we can get significant savings by going through these more, more? You know, we ask them for two percent. Mm -hmm. Is there a better approach? Is there a better way of doing this that we could? Well, if you look at your your department budgets. Most of us did cut the two percent, mm -hmm. and most yeah, of I, us can't cut anymore. I thought there was a well. I hear that, but and, you, know, well, you know, I'm not. I don't know. Because again, we have to budget for things that we don't know Too many might happen or might not happen. My copy you, or my you, grade. You can't or, just guess at it. That means short. You're, the thing is, you've got to have in, money, you have money in, in there. We can't get it short. But you're going to have to look out at those outside entities next year, too, that come in and say, Well, like, that was kind of my next question. Next year, you're really you know, going to have to look at them. and They all come in and didn't raise it. and They all kept theirs pretty much the same as last year. Well, you know. They're going to have to make some concessions too on this. The rest of us do. Yep. So. Well, I I wouldn't disagree with that. I'm I want to ask these questions now so that I know how to proceed. <laughs> right. I don't want to get in this position. But that I think today we can't do when you about talk it. to the department heads, you stress to them we need to save every penny we can. Well, I guess what stop and think before you, you know, do what's, anything. And what's frustrating is all oh, we need. We, start we need to remodel. We need to do this. We need to do that. Well, I don't see all that as being that necessary. necessary. And are we going to do that instead of having employees? Are we going to have That's freeze it. wages? I mean, these are the things that we're going to. We, we start looking at employees. So when you say these department budgets are trimmed to the bone, it just doesn't. I would say most of them are. No, I'm not saying they all are. I don't know, but I think looking at those outside entities is something we probably should do. Like the mental health, like the, uh, the, the extension, the soil conservation, the, all those, all those ones that come in. You know. Yeah, that's, which is significant. As a some, as a, as a group, they're because significant. You don't have any control over their budgets. You just say. Yes, yes, we'll give no. you X amount of dollars. Well, okay, so when they come in with a request, we can still cut that yeah, request. Yeah, we, we didn't, I don't think we increased anyone's this year. No, like a, but, no, but they, they all pretty much stay the same. They the same, but we've been funding it, and I know some other places are, are looking at not, you know, maybe cutting well, back. Was it Barton Barton County cut Barton County something one year drastically yeah. just because they didn't have or didn't want to fund it? That's your option with these outside entities that come in. No, we're going to give you X amount of dollars. A lot of two of you are cutting services for the county too, but you know, some mm -hmm. of them help. Yeah, there's constant. Some of those things you need that. to keep up, you know. So, but I mean, they need to realize you don't have any bottomless pockets too, That's so right. they need to cut it to the bone before they come in. Yep. So the idea or the possibility of going through each one of these and fine to go cutting it. It's just not that practical. It's, For this year? It's not too late. Um, no. No, I'm, I'm asking these questions so that next year Absolutely. we have uh, you know, do we it. We can start the process earlier next year. Usually we start yeah, what have you, What's happened in the past? You guys have been through lots of budgets. Well, it, it's just like so some years you have to, we have departments come in and we kind of back and had meetings with them and they did a good job most of the times. You know, just trimming them back and get our mail loaded back down again. But, but since some of these are, I don't know, costs we can't control. I said, what well, we, if, like Clayton says, we're going to have to, we're going to have roads out there. Those are costs that's, that's come in and either got to fix the road or you know, not have the road. And this is what we're faced with. And this is, 
This is one of the major expenses I can see out there. There's a lot of dollars going in. Well, it's easy to pick on the road department. Because that's no, I'm not, I'm, pick, I'm not picking on the road department. They, they did a good job, but they can't yeah. only do so much with, right. with, with, with what they've got to work with. I understand that. And they only fix so much what they've got to work with. That's but I'm, and I guess the question I'm asking is, do you think we could achieve significant savings by doing, looking at the other departments and trying to trim there as well? And is that something we should be doing? That's, all the time, yeah. But, but you can look at it. But if you can, you know, it just, there's uh, so much we can do, so much we can do. Okay. But it, it's something to look at all the time. Maybe keep your well, part of our job. Even though, to, even though these part, we need to remember, even though it's budget for us, we don't have to spend it. Yeah, the budget you is know. not in the bank. Yeah, exactly. <clears throat> it doesn't seem to be the general attitude. Exactly. Though. It's a guideline. So I guess that's what's frustrating to me. And we, in the county, is not unique. I mean, it's it's everywhere that has has a budget. They, well, I have it in my budget. Yeah. Well, that doesn't mean we have the money in the bank to pay for it. So. But if I have it in my budget, I can spend it. That basically is what I've been told for the last year. That's a lot of the mentality, but that's just because you have it doesn't mean you have to spend it. So that and that. Well, right. Well, that's what I assume, but when I'm told that I can spend it because it's in my budget, then my only recourse is to say it can't, that I'm not going to put it in your budget. Yeah. Okay. Are we not, or we do not approve the purchase? Can we do that when it's presented? Can we just say no? Well, yeah, like, uh, are you talking about the elected officials or the... Well, primarily the elected, yeah, that's what I'm thinking of. Some elected to argue with that, but I don't. I think you can deny it. Well, we may find out. <laughs> well, we can put in a policy that if it's over X number of dollars, it has to have prior approval. Well, we do have policy, we have a policy yeah. like that. Yeah, you raised it to a thousand. We raised it to a thousand, but. <laughs> All right, I'm ready. If it's broke, let's yeah, try to replace it or fix it. I'm ready. If it's not, you leave so it alone. Appreciate you asking questions. Let's leave it. Well, I'm just trying to learn. I'm a little frustrated. But well, this is not a budget test. No, it's not. This has been the worst budget year ever. Why? I don't. I don't know. It just has. Just a little economy around the whole world. Yeah, but our, 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 we should be sitting here being happy because our valuations went up. Went yeah, that, that's pretty easy to understand. Obvious. Are you ready? Okay. I make a motion to be approved. County Resolution 2011-13, our 2012 budget. I will second it. Okay, it's been moved and second. Is there any further discussion? If not, all in favor say aye. 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 Motion carried. And then I have another resolution. Um, this is the one we do every year setting the, um, the service, the 911 telephone charge at 75 cents per line. Good morning. 
guys. Okay. Joe coming up here? That's your request on it. The copier that Steve left downstairs, I guess, in the where he was. Joe wants to know if he have it. I said, Did you ask Moody? <laughs> he just wanted me to put this on here to remind him to yeah, say something. Right. It's, it's, if Steve comes in, I'll ask him. Anything? Lisa, you have anything? Um, recess. Willinger has uh, just about completed their portion of the project out there at the Fire Station Emergency Operations Center. And uh, about uh, the window folks are supposed to come this week. The uh, flooring will be next week. And uh, then we're going to have some of the expenditures that we're going to have, and I've actually got a list of those. But electrical components kind of to tie everything in, the computers and, and everything. We've got a computer already for the for the room, uh, a TV for the corner, shelving units for all the EMS supplies, a projector, chairs, and a Murphy bed. And instead of getting, there's, there's no one local that I can get any of those items from. But mostly what we've done is researched it on the internet, but it would be simpler, and I don't know if I can, if you can give me the authority to, you know, spend, we, what we've got is we've got $10,000 left in expenditures. I mean, that, that we haven't spent off of that original memorial funds. If I can just have authority to, to purchase these items, I don't know if you can give me that, so we don't have to come back on each one. What do you, what do you, one. did you get some estimates? What kind of totals did you get their estimates on? For the electrical components, which would be a, some different things, Nick has handled that, but um, like a receiver to receive all the, the electrical inputs because we'd have different things going through, like the computer, the TV, the projector, but there'll be a splitter, which is $26, this receiver unit, which is $330, speakers, which is $100, um, speaker wire, um, video cables, um, more video cables, uh, digital cables, and then uh, we've, we've got an estimate on, on a TV, just probably get that through like Sam's or Walmart, they're about as, about as good a deal as what you can get on those. Um, shelving units, uh, we've got estimates on those for the $951, but these are the heavy duty shelving units that all in one. Uh, so we've, we've got some different estimates, but I didn't know if you if you I mean, but the, the total of all this, what did you have? How many dollars do you think you're spending? It? We're probably going to be um, we're probably be around seven thousand dollars. So we'd have about three thousand. Did you buy a bed somewhere? No, we looked at, at the Murphy beds, sure. but we haven't. I'm talking about them now. We never did buy one. We we actually we actually had it okay through the state was going to build us one. Is that what it was? Uh, the prison the system, but they came they came back and said that they really didn't want to build one; they wanted to build two. And I just don't know that we'll utilize two, so okay, it doesn't so make any. So you didn't any, go ahead and purchase that? No, no. Because I thought they approved it. I think you guys approved the one, but they wouldn't build one for us after they okay. they give us a one bed price, then they they said ah it's just not. I'm going to build two. Yeah, we really don't want to build just one. I think getting getting all their jigs and stuff yeah. geared up and everything to build one, if they just thought it wasn't going to be price or time efficient enough to do that. And we thought about you know doing two, but it just I just don't think we're going to utilize two. And it's, and then you got the space issue. Even though they do fold up against the wall, it does uh, block out of that portion of wall that you can't really use for anything other than that bed. So uh, we're just going to look at buying one, which which is a little bit more expensive, but not as expensive as as getting two. So how much is Murphy bed? They're pretty expensive. You know, they're up around fifteen hundred dollars for a bed, but it's a cabinet and everything. That, so that's just 
when someone stays over the weekend or something. That or overnight. Overnight. Anytime they stay overnight. What's the TV TV is, is it'll, it'll go in the corner of the, and what we'll have is we'll have the room will be laid out in such a manner that we can run, uh, and we actually do that uh, the two dispatchers that went through tactical dispatch training, uh, the idea is that, uh, and we've even been doing this already, but there'll be, there'll be the TV and the projector and they'll be, they'll be able to pull up the radar, the, the emergency, I mean the emergency, uh, weather radar, and they'll be able to pull it up in, in different radar. There's different screens that you can look at on that radar. Some of them will show wind speeds. Some of them will show um, uh, rainfall. Uh, and being able to look at, at numerous screens simultaneously is, uh, and then they'll have they'll have their radios in here too. So they'll be able. To, what we'd be able. To, what we do is we'll call out one of the tactical dispatchers that's been through the tactical training. They'll come to the emergency operations center like last night, they would come there. We sent Nick out to the station last night, and they will monitor the radar for us so we can have a, uh, they can position our, our spotters in safe spots, uh, but they can also keep an eye on what's going on with the radar. A little bit of a time delay in, in what we're receiving from the state, but it's better than nothing. Well, you're also going to use this room for training and into, is that right? Yeah, we'll you utilize for training. Probably you probably use the TV that for training and into, then. Yeah. So you're using the TV as a monitor? As a monitor, yeah. Yeah. Not to watch movies. Not to watch movies. And, and that TV costs 800, 900 bucks. Yep. Just like a 52 inch flat screen. That's 46, I think. 46 inch one. What you'll see in, in a lot of, uh, like, emergency operations center, I uh, just got back from. Topeka, and uh, there's like, you know, they're just, they'll, they'll line the walls so they can actually pull up different things. You know, one of the things that they're, that technology is allowing us to do is, is live streaming too. And we're actually at that point where we can just about do that now. Where I could actually live stream back on, on the smartphone and, and actually just turn that on and set it up on my dash and and they can see it back in the emergency operations center. So they can see exactly what's what's going on. They can pull up a radar. They could, uh, so if we had a disaster of any kind, we'd send, you know, even if we had like state or federal people coming in, that's where they'd go. They'd go to that emergency operations center and stage there. Uh, and then, you know, we, we wired it for phones. I don't know if we'll go completely. I need to find out, you know, what well, we have to pay monthly because I don't want to have to pay a monthly fee on something that, you know, most likely we're not going to use, but we want it there in case we would need it. So what I'd like to do with the phones is is, is have a deal where we could we could enact them, you know, and power them up in a disaster if we needed them. And I'm hoping that's what we can do. But we're, we're wired for phones all the way around the exterior walls. But that's well, you still got money in your budget, right? This is money that you have. This is all budget. memorial. This is this memorial fund money that was donated to for the purpose yes. of, of this. This is Ida May Colin Memorial money. Are you gonna Are you gonna run out before the project's completed? No. Okay. No. Well, uh, I I don't see us running out before the project's completed at all. Uh, even even putting chairs and stuff like that, you know. We'd, We'd like to put some decent chairs. What we have is, is some old uh, rickety orange looking things that look pretty sad. And to, and to put something like that in a, in a brand new room that's in the emergency operations center just doesn't make very logical sense. So what else besides chairs? You we're look, well, we're looking at uh, all the electrical components that I was talking about, the TV, the shelving, uh, a projector, chairs, and a Murphy bed. That's what we're looking at for that. After that, what are you looking at? That's it. Then the project is done. Project to be done. Flooring, windows. Flooring, windows. Air conditioning, heating. All of that. Actually, those items are done. The room, the room is, uh, um, the room looks very, very nice. Willinger's did a magnificent job. Um, right now, it's, it's all painted. The ceiling's up. Uh, the ceiling panels haven't been installed yet. Uh, the, but they just dropped in. 
which which actually brings me to another question. You know, we we scavengered a lot of that stuff off of, from the annex project, and uh, but we have some that's left, and we have no use for it and no place to store it. So I, I think the logical thing to do would just be put it up for sealed bids and hope we get a bid. And, and and not so much that we're looking to make any money, but that allows anybody that would think that they would need it or want it. Yeah, well, I, I talked to a couple of Vern Bought one out there, you know, he was looking at for, just to have some. Uh, he said that they didn't really need the project very done. He'd like to have it for you know, fairs or something. Mm -hmm. He'd have to leak it for it. I said, fine, he'll so help himself and take some. And, and well, I haven't gotten any yet, but I need a bunch of them for the Shepherd Center and yeah, a few yeah. for the Science Museum, too. Yeah. Maybe just wait and see what can they take out. Donate them? I mean, oh, yeah, we can. Yeah, yeah, certainly do it. If we can find a good home, I'd rather do yeah, that. Yeah, just come out of yeah. that. <coughs> We'll see the anyhow. You can just take yours and bring them back. Yeah, yeah. Actually, it's not that cool. The churches is what we're down. Well, a lot of stuff we're just laying Ceiling tiles, ceiling tiles, we, we, probably, we don't have any spares of those. Uh, what we do have that we grabbed was a lot of the grid. And if there's anybody that wanted, you know, ceiling grid, the drop in ceiling grid like this right here, yeah. there's just gobs of it. <laughs> there's gobs of it. And we, we just grabbed it all because we didn't know what we was going to need. Mm -hmm. uh, but you know we didn't use but a fraction of what there was, and so uh, the ceiling tiles is, is easy. I mean, just give them away. But uh, the grid work is going to have to be somebody that's wanting to put in a, a ceiling. And you know, frankly, you may not get anybody that's interested, but it sure seems like a shame just to throw it away. We might. We might be able to use that. And we've got a garage door, the one of the garage doors that's that's decent that we salvaged out of the two. Um, I wish I had a place to store that thing because um, if you run you run the risk of somebody you know backing into one or something or coming down on the unit. But I have no place to put it, so it's and the again in the salt sheds or something. Um, no, not really. I mean, it's it's pretty much, and I don't think it would survive very long in, in there. In start. Corroding. Is it still sold in there? Mm -hmm. it's, no, it's still uh, used for that? I yes. Know that. Oh, yes. It's I thought that was ours. No, that's ours. Yeah, it's our salt. But they store it. That's where they put it. The county does. Yeah, yes. the county puts our salt in there. Right? Yeah. Yeah. You might see if Ryan's got room out there in one of those sheds out of Sandy. I'll check that out. I'd like to see that. Is. What size is uh, it? Is it? 12 foot tall, 10 foot wide. I would think if you talk to Philip or Ryan, one, they could find some place for you to put that. It'd be nice because I, I, I just hate to get it, uh, I hate to get rid of it in case, because it matches our other two doors. So if we had, you know, like I said, if we had, for some reason, somebody decided to pull it out. The was to take a panel out if you run into the repair, take it, fix it several times, I don't think you several yes. times. And and absolutely, we're saving the motor, you know, that came out of the opener. I think they can find some place to Yeah, we'll try to save that. Um, as far as the... Um, I, uh, go ahead. As far as the grid work stuff, if there's anything you want me to do with that, or maybe would you put it in the notes that I, I don't know what you want to do with that, that ceiling grid. But, just right back over here. Did okay. you get it from the... Uh -huh. yeah. So we're in there for now. Okay, that's what we'll do. Well, the ceiling tiles, right? Yeah. Place. Yeah, we don't have They've never installed. No, we're not going to have surplus of those. But. So, what you're wanting is an approval for the, all the items, right? And coming back. At a at maximum amount of what? $10,000 is what we have a lot. But your, this stuff you said total about $7,000, yes. correct? Yes. Okay. So, we don't. But right now, you're somewhere about around seven thousand dollars after to complete the project. You're saying right? that's what I'm looking at. Yeah, and so you do have to save money, money left over that. So, I was right. donation. I, I think I'd make most of go ahead and just say, uh, uh, drop these for the most reasonable prices and come to seven thousand dollars. That, that's seven, is that all right? Yeah, okay, seven, yep. seven and a, yep. I, I think so. I'll second that. Okay, it's been moved and second. We allow Steve to go ahead and purchase the remaining items to finish out his command center. All in favor say aye. 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 Okay.
on the EMS billing, just to keep you up to speed on that, the uh, USD is now posting, is that correct? Mm -hmm. Posting. Um, we, she's going to give uh, Janelle a call back this morning and just kind of see where, where we're at over there at the hospital. Yeah, and she she brought me some Friday and had me double check it. And, uh, okay. Yeah, she did really good. So. Okay. Uh, the fire truck fix, Jerry is still looking at that, uh, going to get us a, an estimate on the total cost of the, the one that had the fire. And we've already collected the insurance funds around $3,200 on that. But um, we need to get it fixed. So. Uh, Jerry Sanders from over Stafford is going to give us a bid. Uh, it's looking like we'd be best off, I believe, that the best option is going to be to buy a rebuilt motor instead of trying to rebuild that damaged one. Uh, you can get a used motor for about $700 less than a brand new reconditioned motor. I think it'd be wiser just to get one that's reconditioned. But he hasn't got me a total price on uh, the install, the labor portion of that. So uh, I just wanted to kind of update you on that, um, then I'll have something back, hopefully next Monday, to present you on that for a fix. Okay. And if I could have an executive session to talk about non-elected personnel for 10 minutes. I'm going to go into the executive session for non-elected personnel for 10 minutes. I second the motion. May it's been moved and second. All in favor say aye. Aye. For Mark Green. Bit right here. No, well, I was just, um, I was going to ask you about what does it cost to um, seal the roads, but I found this in my folder. Um, so on your 2010, <clears throat> you went K-19, Old 50 Hudson, St. John Road, etc., etc. So the average cost per mile is $18,611.74. Was that over or was that sealed? I don't know. Oh, overlay like, and seal. Yeah, that sounds like an overlay too. What's the difference between an overlay and a seal? Well, an overlay, overlay is we'll, mix and we'll, seal. We'll, it'll we'll smooth. We'll smooth up. We'll put some mix on the road to smooth it out, and a seal is just to seal the cracks off. To seal the weather to the oil well and gravel. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, that's exactly right. I've received several compliments to, to pass on to the road and bridge that the North Stafford Road is just as smooth as silk. Well, we couldn't do it all. I mean, we had the yeah. spots that were, that were in need of attention, and, and hopefully these people don't have any windshield problems right now. <laughs> because I always tell people this time here, don't be putting windshields in. Because yeah, the, I did that last year. <laughs> yeah. You always want to make sure you put your windshields in mm -hmm. after September. Oh, yeah, when you put the salt and the gravel on the road through the winter, yeah, that's a good time. 
Well, it's either that or I. I mean, <laughs> let me, I understand it's not a perfect world. We don't <laughs> have glow torches that can't, which can't melt it off. Not a good time for windshield. So overlay is more expensive than seal. Yes. By half, half as much. Well, and typically what we'll do. It depends on how much mix we put down. Now, right now we're, we're not putting very like over south of Mexico. We, we put down 20 loads per mile, which for around 340 dollars a ton. Now our mix is costing us around 48 dollars is what our cost is per ton. Per ton. No, that's not, not, not and the labor to do it. That's, we're just, that's just, that's we're, 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 we're just talking material. Yes. We're talking care about yes. labor, too. Yeah. So, I mean, I can never... No, I can, she, just, no she runs me off a report, okay. and I had to break these projects out. If you guys would like a copy of them, I can make sure you, you get a copy of them. Well, it's like old 50. Mm -hmm. There's 9.5 miles. There's 130,000 almost $131,000 to overlay and seal. Yes, there was some overlay in there. In the Hudson Road, would that be from 281 to Hudson or to the Stafford Road? No, it would be the, to the Stafford Road. Like so at eight miles mm -hmm. is $172,000. So there was more mixed right there. Yeah. And so this this total was one fourth of all the roads in Stafford County was a million seventy seventy thousand dollars. Was a cost of eighteen thousand six hundred eleven per mile, and that's an average cost over four years. Now, is, are you talking okay. materials only on this too? Well, yes, huh? That's a deal I made up. Okay. Yeah. Well, sand, ceiling, striping, okay. bed, beads. No, that's that's the the dragon. Cost. That was top. dragon cost. So. You you have you. I remember you giving me a deal. Of, uh, comparative dragon. Comparative. Oh. Yeah, this was there. This was this was the dragon. Cost of cost. maintenance, made it, maintaining the ones that we tore up compared to the ones that we had. Oh, right now they're down real low because we haven't. <laughs> 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 yeah, I've heard a couple of <laughs> yeah, that. Well, and, and we've went and drug some just because. But I hate to drag all the material up because you, the, the the sides just keep getting bigger and bigger and bigger. Yeah, keep it up, and I'll go out with my loader and just scoop it up and take it home. No, 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 you can't do that. It's against the law. So we have... You've got to catch me. Tell me again, we have 250 we, miles. We, we maintain 250 miles. At Blacktop? No, we have, the Blacktop is 210 miles. 210? Mm -hmm. Blacktop? It's either 210 or 210, I can't. <laughs> That's it. Because we tore the two miles up here down there. I think it went to 210. For sure. Then the rest of them are saying like the Midwest Road, South of Leesburg. Yes. We have, we have four. We have yes. We have forty. That's right. We have forty miles of recycled asphalt. So two hundred and ten. Two hundred and ten.
I'm sure it's We were talking about old 50 here, past 281 Highway, for example. Mm -hmm. I'm not quite sure why we're maintaining that either. There's lots of people coming to town. Lots of traffic. There's a lot of traffic. I mean, I mean com common sense tells you, I mean, common sense tells you to tear up old 50. But <laughs> you know, I know both that that's, that's not a good option. Well, I mean, I'm right. not that familiar. Well, yeah. well, you got a road half a mile south of there. I mean, it, it doesn't make common sense to take, to maintain this until you look at the traffic that is on there, mm -hmm. and it's older people that are running between St. John and Stafford. So, well, I'm not talking about between St. John's. And yeah, I'm right. talking about. Yeah, I know, but that's still coming into town. That's still part. To me, that's still part of that road. So, because there's lots of traffic comes just straight south out of St. John out of Cobalt. There's quite a bit of traffic on right in there just because it's a collector coming into town. You think so? Mm -hmm. So you'll, you'll get people from Maxville coming that way, coming this way, and you'll get them that go out here and Dillon Road come in west on St. John. That, that road's busy too often, but deal with that road. Oh, yeah. That's, that's the way I usually come in. Yeah, that's, 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 one, that's, 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 that's one of the busy. If any of the can it probably have them too. Yeah, St. John Road may have the highest traffic count in the county. Yeah, well, I would agree with that. But you've got that road, and then you've got this road, and then you've got a major highway all the way to two miles of each other. It's, to me. So where's Bald Eagle? That is a road that runs right on the east, west of Hudson, that runs between 4th Street and the Hudson Road. Oh, okay. That's called the Bald Eagle. Yeah. It is not a, it's not one of the original, it's, it is not an FAS road, if I go and say it very well. Because it doesn't even come on the map since that road. It's kind of, we couldn't get federal money to go do like the overlay on that. Well, I don't know if I could or not. Like, it used to be if, you know, if we were going to do an overlay with hot mix through the state, mm -hmm. if we don't do that three miles, we couldn't have because it wasn't a federal road. And then the K-19, we had that all the way from 281, well, not more than, yeah, 281 to the county line? Yeah, east, away in what we call as K-19 extension, right. runs that first eight miles. And then the Pittsburgh Bear Road from Michael Joe's east of there. And that was because of the house that we built. Because that, that first eight miles was built early, mm -hmm. and then eight miles well, eight was eight miles. But then the railroad was built late 50s, early 60s. And they told me they did most of that up out of the ditch for the crane. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and we haven't heard any more about the little extension from Quivera Road to the visitor center. Um, no, not quite a well. That was she was working on that. She she broke the part of that, and so she's. I've answered a couple of questions on it through some people. So it's so still in progress, as far as I know. Hey, it would surprise me if it went through just because those are kind of lumped together. Yeah, I know. but let me know. But I can, I can give you some, the sheet of that form, the sheet of that form. Because it's just like, how much, the Leesburg Road, mm -hmm. how much does that extend? Mm -hmm. The Leesburg Road over to the Stafford Road. Is that the one from Leesburg Road over to the Stafford Road? Is that? Leesburg what, Road actually runs from, from 281 over to Stafford. It's in two different segments. It's in that three mile segment that runs to what we call the Midwest Road. That's north-south. Midwest Road is north-south. Midwest Road north-south. And, and Leesburg, Leesburg Road, Road, Road is from that corner east to the Stafford Road. I can see where some of these roads were probably done put to blacktop a long time ago just because they were so sandy. 
Well, I don't, I don't you know say that, that was also the, the six mile grid or whatever it was called. Well, Way one back. time, the, what I what I was told, I don't know how accurate this was. They didn't want anybody to have to drive over. Is it three miles or or four miles to, to get to a black top? I think at the time it was it was a cost factor thing. It was, it was, it was less expensive to go ahead and just prime and seal the roads than it was to have not there grade on. That's when oil was plain by the oil was oil was little of that there. It was cheaper than that. And today oil was uh sealing oil was a dollar eighty five and she got no more. And yeah, okay, mixing oil is two dollars. Yeah. This is FOB. Yeah. And how many thousands of gallons does it take to do a mile? It takes a to seal. It takes about thirty six, thirty six fifty on twenty four foot top. Plus, then you cover material of three two hundred tons of sand. Sand is still cheap. Yeah, sand's cheap. It's it's, it's, it's just it. it's yeah, it's, 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 yeah, it's a freight. Yeah. I mean, freight freight eats us up on anything we do. I mean, it's all our rock out of Marion. I mean, it's all. F no, we we've, we've got pretty cheap freight right now. But even even with us hauling, you know, out of close by, you know, thirty miles. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's still. We went through quite a bit of fuel there for a little bit. I mean, we were burning lots of fuel. I mean, it's, it's just the way it is. Years ago, I mean, there was pup pits or there, there were drench pits in the southeast corner. We used to call them the party pit and the pew pit, which was my fat. So it used to have a pump on them, but the county sold their pump on them before I went to work. And then Part of that water or south. Just to the south and west of the lake. I think it's all fenced in now. So then maybe they're going to have a sand. I know. <laughs> <laughs> well, it, I don't know. No, I don't think. Of course, I mean, there used to be a cement company in Stafford. Very big. The thing that surprised me was the other day over by Kinsley, there's that sand pit just east of town. Mm -hmm. He's got six or seven trucks there, mixing trucks. I don't know. And, and, and Edwards County operates their own sand pit, as does Bart County. Yeah. But they're on the river, I mean, on our river, which is typically historically driven really sand. It'll show what we've done through now, through the whole thing. And we can get a total cost on it. I have a seen I had a break to those out in the different projects. Well, that's something we're going to have to take a look at. It's that just not a pleasant sight, so. No. ceiling oil will be next year. Did they put that on the futures market? <laughs> That's what like I was thinking. Like a contract? Yeah. Like you do fertilizer or something? Yeah. Well, the price of crude dropped pretty good there in the last week. Yeah. Like a rock. I wouldn't expect it to stay there. It has an effect the prices. But, but well, it, and it's amazing. And it's amazing. It, it affects the price of the base asphalt very well too, which is really kind of, because there for a while they were, they were cutting everything down so much that there was very little profit down mm -hmm. out there to do.
Thanks, Thanks. Philip. Mm -hmm. Do we have anything else? Well, we will adjourn.